you have a secretary of organization, his name, first name is John. And there are people that take these epistles that are written, first, second, and third John. They'll say, one eye John, and two eye John, and three eye John. <laughs> Somebody was making fun of that. He stood up. I think it was at a conference. And he said, four eye John. He's got glasses. <laughs> We're reading to you out of one eye, John. Okay? One eye. <laughs> We're going to be in chapter 1, and let's begin reading in verse 5. This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him, walk in darkness, we lie. And do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And I want to use this this afternoon. And with the help of the Lord, I want to preach on a message. Don't change the message. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. We don't want to change the message. It works. Okay? We're not trying to accommodate this world, pacify them, and to be accepted. And all of the garbage that's going on in our world, it's not right. Okay? We're not going to try to say that it's right to be accepted of society. We want to keep the message the same. Jesus Christ saves sinners from sin. Amen. So let's look to him. we we'll ask his blessing upon the service this afternoon. And Reverend Coker, when you pray, please, sir. Gracious Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. We ask you to Again, to help Pastor Polk as he preaches your word. Speak to hearts and again, accomplish your purpose by your spirit in each heart and life this, this afternoon, Lord. We'll be careful to give you the praise, the thanksgiving. Amen. Jesus. And I think all of us are familiar with this little uh, example of how things change from one person to another. I remember them doing this when I was in probably junior high. The teacher whispered something into one of the students, first student there, front row on their, their left, whispered into their ear and told them to whisper to the student next to them. And it went all the way around the classroom. And when it got to the last student, he asked that student to stand up and to share what the message was. Well, it was totally different right. yeah. than what he had shared with the first student. <laughs> Because people have a tendency to try to change things. And they, there are things that need to be changed. Okay, there are things that, that need to progress and need to change. And you know what, brother and sister? We need to change. Yes. Amen? Amen. But you know, the gospel message does not need to change. Mm -hmm. It works. Amen. As the old song says, it was good enough for grandma. Mm -hmm. It was good enough for my mom. It was good enough it's good enough for me. Amen? Amen. Amen? Thank God for the truth of the word of Almighty God. We do not need to try to change the message of the word of Almighty God. And we've been dealing with this a little bit lately. I think we dealt with some of it uh, maybe on Thursday. You know, brother and sister, thank God for the grace and the mercy of Almighty God. Amen. Okay, but there is a fallacy that is propagated in the religious world. And that fallacy is that we can just continue on in sin. Okay? Because God is gracious and God is merciful. God does not want us to continue on in sin. Amen. He desires for you and I and every other person to repent of sin. Yeah. As a matter of fact, that's what the church is to be preaching. Jesus said that we are to preach repentance and remission of of sin. Yes. Not just remission, but repentance of yes. sin. Yes. Amen? Amen? 
we can absolutely turn away from sin. Jesus didn't come to save us in our sin. He came to save us from our sin. He didn't just come to deliver us from judgment. Brother and sister, he came to deliver us what brings, from what brings the judgment upon men and women. Okay? We have a hope in God, and that hope is not just going to heaven. Thank God that is part of the hope that we have, but the hope is that God changes you and I, brother and sister, and he prepares us and prepares our life because he is coming back for a church without spot and without blemish. Jesus cleans us up, brother and sister, and he changes our lives. This is what John was telling us here. He was telling us, brother and sister, that this is the message. We do not need to change the message. You know, we are admonished in the word of God not to change the message. We know that the, the, the word of God is, is settled in heaven, okay? And it's not going to pass away, not one jot or not one tittle of the word of God. It's all going to be fulfilled. But we can also come over into the New Testament and we can learn in the book of Galatians, the apostle Paul writing to this church, he said, if anyone come unto you, even an angel, preaching another gospel, he said, let it be accursed. And he went again and he reiterated that statement. He said, if somebody come and bring unto you another gospel, which is not their gospel, he said, let them be accursed. We can go to the book of Revelation, and I know that it's specifically talking about the things that are written in the book of Revelation, but the same principle is taught. Okay? He said, if any man... Uh, add to or take away anything that is written in this book. Let the curses that are written in this book be upon them. We are not to change the word of God. We are not to take the word of God and as we like to say, water it down. We are not to, to tell people that it's okay for them to continue in sin. All right now. Okay, it's not hatred, brother and sister. It is the truth. Yes. And people need to know the truth. Yes. You know, we don't say what we say out of any kind of wrong spirit or any kind of self-righteousness, any kind of animosity or hatred uh, towards anyone, brother and sister. But you know what? I think back to when God saved me, there was absolutely a conviction of sin in my life. Yes. And it was a good thing. God was letting me know that things are not right. You can't do the things that you are doing. You can't have the things in your heart and in your life that you have and be right with me. You need a change in your life. You truly need to let me come in and be the Lord and the Savior of your life. Yes. And when we do, God will change us. Okay? You know, I used to be a drunk. I'm not a drunk anymore. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Okay? Amen. I used to curse. I don't curse anymore. Amen. Amen. If we're cursing, we've got something wrong in our heart. We need Amen. to not make excuses for it. We don't need to say, well, God loves me. Yes, God does love you. But brother and sister, there's something wrong and we've got sin in our heart. We need to repent of that sin. We need to let Jesus wash it out of our lives. We need to let Jesus wash it out of our lives. Not to leave it, leave it there and make excuses for it. You know, you hear people say things and, oh, God loves them and God loves, and God does love people. But brother and sister, love is not an excuse for you and I to continue in sin. Grace is not an excuse for you and I to continue in sin. Yes, where sin did abound, grace did much more abound. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Amen. Don't we know that who we yield ourselves to, that's whose servants we are? Amen. Huh? If we yield ourselves to righteousness, brother and sister, we are the servants of righteousness. But if we yield ourselves to sin, we are the servants of sin. Amen. We're not to be the servants of sin. We're to be the servants of Almighty God. Amen and amen. Thank God, brother and sister, we can have a change 
in our life. We don't need to change the message. God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. God is light, brother and sister. God is truth. God is righteous. God is holy, brother and sister. We serve a God that is holy, and we're to be holy as he is holy. Amen. He is a Amen. sinless, righteous God. Jesus committed no sin. Neither was there any guile found in his mouth. And you and I are being made like him. Amen. You know, Amen. we've come to him. And we've given him our heart and our life. And that's what it takes to be saved, brother and sister. It's more yeah. than just acknowledging that he existed and saying, I believe in God. The devils believe in trouble, brother and sister. The devils absolutely believe in trouble. But won't we know, oh foolish man, that faith without works is dead. Amen. There needs to be Amen. some action on our part. We need to turn away from the things that we know are wrong. Yes. All right. And we need to put them behind us Amen. and turn to God. Amen. Okay, we Amen. love you. God loves you. We're not mad at anybody, brother and sister. God is the answer and God will change us. He's not, he is the solution, brother and sister. Mankind, you know, I, I read something this morning. Someone was talking about God and they made the statement. I said, oh man, that's so true. They said, man wants to run to God when he's got a problem. But, you know, a lot of times uh, man is the one who's created the problem. God didn't create it. Okay, they want God to have mercy. They want God to intervene and protect and all that. God does all of those things, brother and sister. But you know what God wants us to do? God wants us to listen and to stop doing the things that cause those problems in our lives. Amen. Amen. God wants us to listen. He wants us to follow, not just to come to him as if he's some kind of fire escape, but he is to be the Lord of our lives. He said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. Amen. Continuing Amen. in the word of God. You know, you you go and you, 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 you want to pray with people. And people say, well, I'm, I'm okay. I'm good. But sister, well, well, how are we living our lives? Are we walking in darkness? Are we walking in hatred? Are we, are we living our lives in sin? If we are, it's not good. It's not right, my friend. God has given us the opportunity right here, right now in our lives to turn away from that. Amen. To turn to him. To open our heart to him and to truly begin to allow him to be the Lord of our lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It's not your righteousness. It's not mine. It's God's righteousness. And we need to submit ourselves to the righteousness of Almighty God. Yeah. We need to let him be the Lord of our lives, brother and sister. Yeah. So many things that we can read about in the word of God, brother and sister, that, that declare unto you. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9. Know ye not that unrighteousness shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. I know our society is trying to get you and pressure you into accepting all of this debauchery and filthiness that they are promoting. It is wrong. Yes. Amen. All right, yes. It's not a lack of love on our part. Huh? It's a lack of a fear of God on their part. Amen. Yeah. But you know what they need to know? They need to know that sin is sin and wrong is wrong. Yes. Okay. And God is not some fool. God is not mocked. Whatever a man soweth, so shall he reap. If we sow to the flesh, we're of the flesh going to reap corruption. But if we sow to the Spirit of Almighty God, we of the Spirit are going to reap everlasting life. People need to know. They need to stop sowing to the flesh. They need to stop giving in, brother and sister, to all of the sin and filthiness. And we're not to be that way, Christian. There's reasons why we do things the way that we do. We're not ignorant. Of the devil's devices. Okay? Brother and sister, we, we, as the saying goes, we're to, I'd rather be safe than sorry. Yes, sir. You know, the Bible tells me that the devil is as a roaring lion. 
He walks about seeking whom he may devour. Right. You stop and think about that. Have you ever watched maybe a documentary or something about lions and how they hunt? Okay, they don't just run and jump on the biggest uh, wildebeest that's in the in the herd. They look for one, maybe a small one that is lagging behind, yes, maybe one that is injured or one that is hurt. They look for something that is easy prey, yes. and that's the way the devil is. Okay, he tries to get you out of the herd. He tries to spiritually weaken you. He tries to get you maybe to lure away from the rest of the herd to where you're out there on your own. Yes. Hmm? Yes. Where you shouldn't be. And then he attacks. Well, brother and sister, there's a lesson there for you and I. Let's stay close to the herd. Yes. Let's not allow ourselves to be drawn away and distracted by things. Mm -hmm. Brother and sister, let's keep close to the herd. And thank God, brother and sister, we can keep close to Jesus. Amen. He is our good shepherd. Amen. He has given his life for the sheep. Yes. He protects you and I. Yes. We've yes. got to stay in the fold, brother and sister. We've got to stay where that protection is from Almighty God. Brother and sister, we are not to be this way. We're not to, we, we go on and say, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. That's past tense. But you are washed. But you are sanctified. God still sanctifies his people. Amen. He saves us. He fills us with the Holy Ghost. He sanctifies us, brother and sister. It is a lifelong process. Amen. God cleans us up. We are conformed to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We are being made like him. Thank God. Paul wrote to us again in Galatians chapter 5, and he began to talk about the flesh and the spirit. And we quoted some of that already, but he began to list the works of the flesh. And he said, they are manifest, they are made known. Which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. Now let me tell you something, okay? I'm just going to tell you, people don't want to tell you this. Sex outside of marriage is a sin. It is wrong. All right, now, that's true. Absolutely. If you're not married, you don't have any business doing anything. The Bible even teaches, and it goes the other way, too. It's better for a man not to touch a woman. But to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife. And it goes the other way, too. All right, now. Amen. You start touching her out on somebody. Something else is going to happen. Okay? One thing leads to another. Yeah, and before right. you know it, you find yourself doing something that you that is sin, that is wrong. That's right. Wait till you get married. Yeah. Be careful around the opposite sex. Yeah. Just because somebody comes to church doesn't mean that they uh, are, are a Christian. Right. Right. Okay? You shouldn't be getting alone with people of the opposite sex. You don't know what they might be trying to do. We don't want anybody to get hurt. God loves you. We love you. Think about what you're doing. Okay? What we say, we say out of love. We don't want anybody taken advantage of. Okay? We don't want anyone to be entrapped or anything like this. Okay? you got to be careful. Okay? you got to be careful. Okay? Not everybody has your best interest at heart. At heart, there are people that will take advantage of you. Okay, and, and, and do you wrong? Okay, you got to be mindful of that stuff, okay? And we have to be mean or anything like that. We love you. We don't want you to get hurt, okay? You know, we have a responsibility as a family. You know, we're talking about, we're talking about maybe that example of a herd. You know, when that, something like that happens and the lion comes and begins to attack, maybe one of the little ones, all the big ones run over. All right. Yeah. They start uh, attacking the lions and getting them off the little one. No, you're not going to hurt our baby. That's right. Well, yeah. You're not going to hurt our little one. We're not just going to sit by That's and right. watch you destroy this person without saying something and doing something about it. That's, That's right. why we do what we do. Amen. Okay? Thank God, brother and sister. Thank God for the family of God. There is protection. There is protection, and God works that way, doesn't he? Okay? Thank God for people that God puts in our lives 
that are genuine, that are real, that you can really trust? Yes. Amen. Amen. Okay? And God has people that are that way. Any works of flesh are manifest which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. Okay, I'm just going to tell you, hope they don't throw me off, off the platforms, but if they do, they do. Okay? Brother and sister, I've already told you fornication is a sin. Sex outside of marriage is a sin. A marriage is, to be, is between a man and a woman. Amen. In the beginning, God made them male and female. Amen. Amen. Jesus reiterated that. That's not hatred. That's just the way that it is. Okay? All of this garbage uh, uh, that they're trying to promote, uh, it's written right here. It's called uncleanness, brother and sister. Let's go on and read what it says about these things. Okay? It goes on and it tells us lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, reveling, that's partying, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit, this is what we need to have in our lives, and we can, Amen. by the Spirit of Almighty God. What is it? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lust. Ephesians chapter 5, beginning in verse 8. For you were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth proving what is acceptable unto the Lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness but rather reprove them for it is a shame to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. You know we're not trying to joke around about it. We're not trying to 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 water it down and and uh, uh, and say well you know it just it doesn't really matter. God just loves everything and everybody. God does love people, brother and sister. But you know what? There are things that are wrong, and people are going to stand before God, and we're all going to give an account for our lives. Do you know that we're going to give an account for what we say to people? I'm going to give an account for what I preach and what I teach. Huh? It tells me that in the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 17, I must give an account to God for what I teach and what I preach to you. Okay? Well, I think you're kind of overboard. I'd rather be overboard. All right. Amen. I'd rather be Preacher. I'd rather err on the side of right. Yes. Yes. And I don't think I'm erring. I don't think we're really overboard. No. No. Okay? Then to be underboard. Yes. Yes. All right. Then to be ashamed of what the Bible actually not teaches. Amen. To not have the courage to tell men and women what is wrong and what is right. Was Jesus that way? Did Jesus just walk around and tell people, you can just do whatever you want to do. I love you. It doesn't matter. He did not do that. Okay? He told people that were wrong that they were wrong. And he did it out of love so they would have the opportunity to change and to repent. He did it with me. He did it with you. He still does it. He uses the Holy Ghost. Okay? To convict and to convince us of sin. That's part of the work of the Holy Ghost. Brother and sister, let's not lie to ourselves. We are the light of the world. Amen. Okay? We're no longer in darkness. We're not in darkness. We were like that. That's past tense. We're not to be that way anymore. Amen. And if we are, okay, I'm still sinning all the time. I'm still cursing all the time. I still got all of this anger and this bitterness in my heart. Well, you know, you need to be more than a churchgoer. You need to sincerely come to Jesus today before your life is over with and it's too late. And you need to repent of that sin in your life and truly give your heart and your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He will wash that sin out of your heart and out of your life. Amen. Why do you want to live your life in bitterness and sin? It's time to surrender Amen. before it's too late. Amen. It's 
time for us, brother and sister, to surrender and to give our lives to the Lord. We are to walk in the light, brother and sister, not in rebellion, not in deception, not in hypocrisy. God has mercy. And the blood of Jesus cleanses us, us from what? From all sin. It drives out the darkness. The light of God drives the darkness away. In the beginning, we know that it was chaotic and it was darkness. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Amen. And it drove the darkness away. And the Spirit of God, brother and sister, began to move. God began to create, didn't he? And God saw everything that he, was, that he made. And he didn't say it was dirty and it was simple, but he said it was good. Yeah. And he made them to be what? Very good. Yes, and yes, we lost that in sin, but what we lost in Adam, we have more than regained in Jesus. God makes us very good. Amen. And we can be, and we shouldn't accept anything less. Brother and sister, we shouldn't accept anything less. I'm getting ready to close. Okay, she's going to come and play and going to sing. We need to look at our hearts today. We're not mad at anybody. But we need to be serious about this, brother and sister. It's not just coming to a building. It's not just because we like some people that come there. Every one of us is going to stand before God and give an account for their life. If we're not truly saved, we're going to be lost for eternity. But we don't have to be lost. Today, Jesus can save anyone. He can change you from the inside out. He can take away the sin, the bitterness, the jealousy, the hatred, the loneliness, and he can fill you with the goodness of Almighty God. <coughs> Today, as we bow our heads and we close our eyes in reverence to him, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. My friend, will you repent and turn to him today? He speaks to our hearts by his spirit. She sings today. Let us come in close. Surrender your heart to Jesus. God bless you today is our prayer. Let us pray.